Hi there. I'm Lisa Melandri, Executive Director at CAM St. Louis, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this very special edition of First Friday. Due to COVID-19, Pride celebrations have been rescheduled to August, so we thought it would be the perfect opportunity to put together a lineup celebrating LGBTQ and Pride. We also, having been affected by COVID-19, wanted to make sure to bring you this incredible lineup of activities and events digitally so that everybody who wants to can participate from the safety and the comfort of their home. We're gonna be taking cues and inspiration tonight from an exhibition on view at CAM, Liz Johnson Arter's Dusha, and from one special series of photographs in that exhibition taken at the East London Club Night PDA, Public Displays of Affection, a space for queer and non-binary expression and for experimental DJs. Now you can see these photographs in person until August 23rd on site at CAM, but you'll also get great insight and a closer look into them as part of our segment tonight, Artists on Art. So we're really looking forward to that. To take us through this evening, we have the privilege and the honor of our MC Maxi Glamour, a truly local and wonderful gem here in St. Louis. Maxi has collaborated with CAM on family programs in the past, and they are cooking up something pretty wonderful for the fall, so stay tuned. By way of providing an introduction, Maxi Glamour is a non-binary drag queen, multidisciplinary artist, and an activist. Known as the demon of polka and baklava, Maxi Glamour was the star of the hit series on Netflix, The Boulet Brothers Dragula Season 3. A melange of burlesque, drag, and whimsy, Maxi delivers a uniquely exciting brand of blue fantasy that transcends the gender binary. They're also the founder of Quart, a St. Louis-based group focused on using queer art as a platform for social change. Over the past six years, they've worked with over 300 artists. With that, it is my great pleasure to welcome you again to tonight's festivities. It is a really, really wonderful thing having you. And I would also like to thank Maxi for being with us, taking us through the evening, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thanks, Maxi. Take it away. Thank you so much, Lisa, for that introduction. Uh, yeah, I am Maxi Glamour, and I'm so excited to be with all of you here at CAM for the first Fridays. It's a little different first Friday because now we are in the digital age. <laughs> which is pretty awesome because a lot of times we're experiencing museums in person going up to things and seeing them and being told to move back. <laughs> I know for me that happens a lot. I get told to getting too close, but I just really want to look. Anyways, I'm so thankful that you all came and joined us. Let's get started. First up, we have Cam's learning and engagement staff. CJ Mitchell and Mary Marie's, and they're gonna be joining us for a painting demonstration. So if you wanna join at home, gather some masking tape, watercolor, acrylic paints, any other kind of paints, and a canvas, a paper bag, something to paint on, a wall. And we're gonna explore how colors express our, our individual identities and our experiences. And we're also gonna take a look at the different colors within different variations of queer flags, such as the trans flag or the non-binary flag or the gay flag and so on and so on. And please welcome Contemporary Art Museum's learning and engagement staff, CJ Mitchell and Miriam Ruiz. Hi, welcome to our At Home First Friday, uh, and I am CJ Mitchell. I am School Programs Coordinator at CAM, and I am at my home in St. Louis City. And today, I want to introduce Miriam. 
Yeah, my name is Mary Ruiz. I also work at CAM. I'm School and Community Programs Manager, and I am coming at you from a location that I cannot disclose for legal purposes. <laughs> okay, well, today we're going to be making um, a paint or tape resist painting. Uh, related to pride. So pride colors that we're trying to use are different pride flags. Um, paint resist offers a cool design. It leaves the canvas white uh, where the paint is down and where we paint over it once you peel it off. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I've done an ally flag uh, back right behind me, but that didn't involve any um, tape resist. Just stripes and lines and etc. And uh, Miriam, oh, I want to introduce what tools we're going to be using. Um, we are going to be using acrylic, acrylic paints. If you have acrylic paints or if you have watercolor paints, you can use those. Um, also, you will need resist tape or painter's tape, as it's called. It comes in like blue and green. Masking tape will also work. It may bleed a little bit, but it'll also do the job. Um, I'm gonna be working on a canvas, but you can do this at home with maybe a heavier paper uh, and then put the tape across and maybe have it attached to some type of board where you could tape maybe the edges of the paper and then use the tape to make your design and then paint directly on top of that. So you have a lot of different options. So paint, canvas, um, paper, uh, resist tape, paint brushes and water is what you'll basically be needing today. Um, and maybe scissors for cutting your um, resist tape. And Miriam. So I'm gonna take a second and just go over some of the different flags that you may want to use for inspiration. So as you can see, there are a lot of different flags that are fall under the LGBT banner. We have the traditional pride flag, the POC flag, which is just the traditional pride flag with a brown and black uh, bar. We have the bisexual flag. We have the trans flag, the pansexual flag, asexual, gender fluid, non-binary, the lesbian flag, the gender queer, intersex and straight ally, which you saw CJ has already made. Now, some of these flags colors, if you're interested in what paint you need, it's pretty obvious. For bisexual, you can either get some of these colors from your store, like magenta, you can easily get. Some of these though, you may actually have to do some mixing. And most of us are familiar with, if you want a light blue, just blue plus white, pink is red plus white, but some of these get a little bit more complicated uh, to demonstrate that. And also because I don't ever take the easy way out, I will be doing the lesbian flag, which has three different shades of pink and three different shades of magenta plus white. When mixing your colors, as I found out myself, make sure that you're getting a warm, red if you are planning on making a purple. If you happen to get a red with some yellow mixed into it, something like a cadmium red, you're gonna get kind of a muddy color. So I recommend something like alizarin crimson, which is a little bit of, has a little bit of blue. It's like a, a warm, cool color, maybe just a cool color. And it will mix a lot better with purple than uh, a cadmium or a hot red. I'm gonna pass this back over to CJ. Okay, so your final project will look something like this or whatever colors you decide to use. So the white area is where the resist paint, I mean the tape was, and it's peeled off after it has completely dried up. So that's just an example of what you, your outcome may be. And we're gonna start with just a plain canvas. And you want to take uh, your, your resist tape. Um, I cut this a little bit thinner because my resist tape was a little um, thick. And so just I want just a thinner line on such a smaller canvas. So then you'll take your, uh, your tape and arrange it how you would like it on your canvas or your paper. 
And I will also say that there are places where you can actually get thin tape as well. You can probably get it from Ziglick, ArtSmart, or even someplace like Lowe's. All right, so I am cutting a little bit. I'm arranging my tape on my canvas, kind of how I want my design. It doesn't matter. You'll end up with any kind of cool geometric form. Um, will be awesome. And you want to make sure you firmly place it on your canvas. So that it doesn't bleed. I'm also cutting mine because it's a little bit longer than I expected. All right, and now I'm gonna, I'm just doing a few different line formations. I'm gonna take off a little bit. All right, I know this may be a little bit harder to see. And my scissors just dropped. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna do maybe one more piece, two more pieces. And maybe one more going this way. If you want it to be more clean, you can also definitely cut the edges a little bit. So I basically have this formation, maybe since I have a little bit more tape left, I may do one more right there and have it go across. All right. So now I have my tape on the way I want it, my geometric design. You can also try and take, I have this little mini ruler. I'm gonna take the little ruler and maybe run it across. Try not to, if you're using canvas, try not to rip it and just run it along the edges of the tape just so that it's firmly secure. All right, so now I am ready to to paint. So the next step is maybe if if you know what color flag you're going to use and you kind of want to have some uniformity with your stripes, you can take a ruler and a pencil. I think my ruler, if you can see that, it's see-through. Um, so my canvas is 12 inches, so I'm going to do about two inches each or maybe one, two, three, four, five. All right, so I have made one, two, three, four, five marks, which will give me six, six stripes. And I'll take the ruler. And you probably want to be light with this because some paints, it might show through. So just make a light mark so you know where your stripes are going. Or if you're not gonna do stripes, it doesn't really matter. If you just wanna fill in the spaces like Miriam is somewhat doing, and then have a creative flag. So then my stripes are on and my line indicators are on and now I'm ready to paint. And I did a very asymmetrical, geometric looking design, and I am going to be painting mine like stained glass. So every triangle is going to have its own shade. Now, because the lesbian flag has seven different colors, and this clearly has more than seven different shapes, I will be reusing the same color. I am going to go ahead and start with my two darkest colors, magenta, which is going to be alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. You don't have to use these two specific shades if you choose to go with fancier paint, but I do recommend going with a warmer blue. And as I said earlier, a, kind of a red that has a little bit of blue in it so that the purple is going to be a lot more vibrant. So I'll start with a magenta, start with a red, 
and then I will start adding the white from there. Remember, it's always easier to lighten a color. It's much harder to darken it. All right, and I've started with my red, and I will probably paint maybe every other stripe just so I can give the paint a little bit of time to dry in between so that I don't kind of smear it. If you're using watercolor for this project, it's definitely going to be a lot lighter. It will not be as opaque, which is totally fine. It has a cool effect anyway. And CJ may have already said this, but especially with uh, darker acrylic colors, you'll notice that they're not going on really opaque, so several layers may be required. You might be able to get away with a single layer if there is plenty of white mixed with the paint because that is an opaque paint. All right, now I'm moving on to my purple, which is at the bottom. I've done my red at the top. I'm still painting red triangles over here. I have a feeling CJ is going to beat me. Uh, yeah, mine's not as, as complex. And it's a, definitely a lot smaller um, canvas. No. This is very relaxing, though. Yeah, it is. All right, now I'm mixing my magenta. I'm going to start with red because the red just isn't quite as powerful as the blue. So I'm going to keep adding ultramarine blue in very small amounts until I get the shade that I want. Because if I start with blue, I'm gonna have a very, very blue purple. You know what, that looks a little dark, so I'm just gonna add a hair of white to lighten it up. All right, I think I'm gonna to move to my green next. If you don't want to re use resist paint, just like the um, the ally flag I did, you'll basically just be um, using a ruler to maybe get your lines down and then uh, to also make your triangle. Um, but that's also an option if you just want to just do a flag on, can on your canvas or paper. You could also do it without the resist tape. If you are mixing your own colors, you will discover that the majority of your time is going to be spent trying to get the exact shade that you managed the first time when you have to make more of that same color. Very frustrating. Always leave room for happy accidents, as Bob Ross would say. There we go. Ah, so I have managed to now paint four squares. Cool, I've got three stripes. 
They got three stripes on, three more to go, or three more colors to go. For those of you who are painting at home, you can make this even more exciting by challenging one of your friends to a race to see who can paint it the fastest. <laughs> It's not about finishing first. That's what losers say. Uh, hmm, I put the paint on I really don't want to use next. I think I'm going to go to orange next. Mix it up. Okay, I'm going to start adding white to my magenta color after I mix up a little more so that I can make my lighter shade of magenta. Which, if you go on Wikipedia, you will discover has its own name, but I don't remember what it is. What? Lilac? What Lavender? Something like that. Light purple? I mean, sure. I was trying to be fancy. Lavender? I just sound like you an artist. It, you, you, you call it lavender, I guess. All of these, all of these colors have official names. Some of them are even named for the person who discovered the color. I'm not really sure how you discover a color. I wouldn't mind discovering a color. Okay, so I'm starting on my slightly lighter shade of magenta, or we could call it lavender if we want to be fancy. I am getting paint all over, not legally, my table. Well, I might recommend, recommend putting newspaper down. Uh, yeah, that might be a good idea. Oh, wow, painting, definitely. Especially with acrylic. All right, I got four colors on. I am now moving on. I think my blue is next. And then I'll come back to yellow. So once I have all my colors on, I still know it looks a little light. So I probably will add another layer to that. Um, another layer of paint. You know, CJ, I think we should start our own YouTube channel. We could do this and make money, right? Uh, yeah, if you have advertisers. <laughs> Good advertising. Your advertisers pay you? Well, I, think we could, I think we could get a following. Uh, we have the charisma. She's like, nah. <laughs> nah. I'm good. I'm all good. Also, if you have bigger brushes, that's nice too. If you need to cover a larger area, the same color. I'm trying to not use the same brush over and over again. But of course, if you're painting colors in the same color family, that's not as big of a deal. No, not really. I just don't wanna really have to clean a brush off in between. Well, that, that works too. All right. I know we're getting near the end, but I am just now moving on to my lightest shade of magenta, which I'm going to give the name of Unicorn.
a bit more white. Oh, yes. You see, isn't that lovely? Got a little purple in my blue area. Happy accident. All right, I'm going to move on to the lightest color, yellow. Okay. I'm hoping you can still see and I haven't completely blocked my whole flag. Oh, now I got green. Bit more yellow. Okay, well, I definitely think I'm going to lose this contest. I may be about halfway through with mine. Oh, it's I'm never about a contest. Because I guess you are. I'm up here. No, I'm not. Because mm -mm, I'm getting green in my yellow area. That's wonderful. See, that's like a natural rainbow, though. True. That True. is definitely what you intended to do from the off. Okay. So I have all my colors on at this point. And what would happen? is I'd keep painting and painting um, until I had a nice color consistency. Um, but for the sake of time, I have a finished flag already done. <laughs> and what you'll do is once your paint has dried is you will remove the tape. So I did get a little bleeding from this one. Um, and what you can do is, yeah, you can go back into the areas that if you want to kind of keep them in straight lines with white. And so I have some white here. So you can take white paint or what are really cool are, I think I have one around here, uh, paint pens that you can go back into and kind of clean it up. Um, I'll show you with paint. I'll take my white and then take a brush and then see if I could go over some of these areas that and while she's doing that, you can see my almost argyle sweater looking of a lesbian flag inspired painting. Thanks.
And that's actually doing a pretty good job. You can see I had a little bit of um, And it's cleaning up nicely. Um, if you do not want to do it with a paint and a paintbrush, uh, paint pens are awesome. Which you can go back in, but I can just kind of go over the areas where I feel like it went through quite a bit and kind of clean those up nicely. She's such a professional. or make the lines look a little bit more consistent in shape, size. So that's kind of what you would do to, if you get a little bit of a run underneath the painter shape. But what will also help solve that problem is I don't think uh, I really uh, smoothed down my painter shape all the way. I might recommend using an ID card kind of scrape along the tape to make sure you get all the air pockets out. As you can see, I didn't quite manage that here. Got a couple. Ah, it still looks pretty clean. Yeah. It's pretty good. And that's basically it on doing your um, tape resist uh, pride flag, any flag that you want to do, any Anyway, any any flag that you want to do, the colors you like are are with a geometric design. And I want to thank you for stopping by and doing painting at um uh, cam at home with us this first Friday. And um, happy Pride! Happy Pride! Bye. And next up, I'm so excited to hang out with one of my favorite people in the city of St. Louis. She is a trans icon. She is a writer. She is a icon. I love her. Her name is Joss Barton. And Joss Barton and I are going to look at Liz Johnson, our tours PDA series, and kind of dissect them and look at them and just kind of share with you how we feel and let you at home kind of get a feeling for yourself. Go on and join us. Hi, Joss, how's it going? Hey, Maxie, how are you, darling? Doing wonderful. How are you enjoying your quarantine? Oh, I'm actually really enjoying it. I have found that it has been amazing um, for my art. I've actually been doing a lot of projects, a lot of writing. I've gotten a lot of great opportunities to share some work, just like we're doing now on Zoom. Um, I think it's great. A lot of people are moving um, art into this digital realm, so I can't complain. But I do miss seeing all my fabulous queers, so that is another part of it, though. Yes, I definitely miss, like, hanging out with people and venues and going to museums and events. Uh, it's really cool that we can be here with Cam and we kind of can explore museums in a digital way. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so today we're talking about Liz Johnson, Artur, the Ghanaian Russian artist, and all of the photography. I know that you did a little bit of research on her, trying to figure out what's what, since you know both of us in the club scene and we're queer and trans. And can you just tell me a little bit about like who she is and what you found out? Yeah, well, you know, I was doing a little research when you and the fabulous folks at CAM reached out to us to kind of talk about this exhibit that's happening at the CAM right now. Obviously, it's hard to get a lot of us in spaces, obviously, because of what is happening with the COVID crisis. So it's this is a great way for people to experience some of Liz Johnson Archer's work in a digital way, and hopefully it'll inspire them to do some of their own research and maybe look at some of her fabulous photography. What we're going to be looking at today are some of the photos that she took at a very exclusive party in London called PDA. Um, I found out through my research 
that she was one of the first photographers allowed to take photos at this party. Um, and some people may not know maybe the history of what club culture is, especially queer club culture or club cake culture, but very similar to what happens in the United States, especially in New York City. You know, London has a thriving um, underground queer artist, uh, queer community. And a lot of those artists that come from the diaspora of Africa or Middle Eastern countries or other immigrant experiences or second or third generation um, POC queer um, experiences in London, they started to throw their own parties and do their own underground queer celebratory, um, just dope themes where they were the center of attention and they were the ones um, being the ones controlling the narrative of what it means to celebrate queer nightlife. And so um, these PDA parties were primarily um, organized by and attended by um, black and brown, queer and trans and non-binary um, folks in London. So they're amazing photography, photographs. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to see some of them. Um, and as you are aware and myself, you know, we kind of have our own experiences in the club scene as queer artists of color. So some of this might resonate with us. Yeah, totally. I see myself in these, or like I see my like, friends and some of these things and like, there's a lot of like connection with all of this imagery and this nightlife. Let's dive deep, should we? Yeah, I can't wait, yeah. And we're coming to the entrance of the exhibit. So let's go inside. All right, so we're here now in the exhibit and I see all the work everywhere. Let's get a little closer look. All right, let's look at this first one. I like that one. What, what are some of the things that pop out to you with this very first photo? Just, just, just visually. I like it's how it's like really candid and it's not, it doesn't feel like it's really manipulated. It doesn't feel as like manufactured in studio and I like it how it's like very organic and I'm like it captures like, oh, these are some people at a club and like, hey, let's tell this for the camera for a second. <laughs> you know, it makes me think of, you know, all of those moments, you know, people have this concept of like club culture and all the things and crazy experiences that happen, you know, at the DJ booth and under the disco lights, but this is giving me all of those amazing moments that we experience when we're outside smoking a cigarette. <laughs> we outside in line, or we outside to get a little fresher breath air. Um, and these two people um, just kind of standing there, we don't know what they were doing, but I can imagine and see, you know, what was happening probably before this picture was taken you know, connecting, maybe smoking a cigarette, maybe flirting, maybe just talking the shit, maybe catching up, um, or maybe even meeting each other for the first time. You know, I know you probably have many experiences where <laughs> you've met some of your best friends once you walked out, stumbled, fallen out the club, and someone's right there to <laughs> interact with your energy because they're also <laughs> hanging on the wall. Um, and, but the party's going on inside, but there's an amazing moment that's happening outside as well. And lots of them. I love this next one. Like, she's so yes. fierce. Like, look at her with the she, palm. Tree. She's not fucking around. She came to slay. Um, this amazing palm tree wallpaper. I don't know if that's wallpaper or actually, like, some sort of, like, um, backdrop, but... She knows she's in the islands. She knows she's in the islands. She's, she's giving, but she's gonna wear her mink coat on the beach. She look. That's not mink. But <laughs> she, she gonna wear her fox mink. I don't know what it is, but she gonna wear her fur coat on the beach with the platinum blonde hair. And she, I love it. I love like just like whenever you're at a club and you can just like 
pose and like be fabulous in a corner, just like kind of be like a wallflower. And people come up to you and like, oh, hey, you're beautiful, hi. And it's just like, that's club culture to an extent, just like being fun and like complimenting each other and it's like being seen and like flashy and flossy. And I also love how people in the queer community who maybe don't have access to that that realm of like adulation and like respect or maybe even intimidation in the wider world of white supremacy and cis patriarchy, you know, in the club, they can be goddesses and gods and, you know, all they got to do is hang out with the mean coat on the wall, sipping on a drink, smoking a cigarette, and you know, that's, that's the person to go talk to. That's the person you make a little moment to say, oh, hey, you know, hold court with them. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think I've had those experiences many times in, in the clubs. Um, and you know, those, those types of people, they hold this energy that totally gets exuded in a photograph, just like, it, like this person's fabulous femme creature with this fabulous wig, this great highlight, and this powerful fist, um, and of course some cleavage on the, underneath the mink coat. Sickening. Let's look at this next one. I love this one. The thing that strikes me the most about this photo, um, I don't know if you catch it, um, but the geometric line pattern of the background contrasts so beautifully with their plaid pattern pants. Like, that's the first thing that I see. I'm like, this is so amazing, this like contrast. And then as you obviously see this bright blue face, that also stands out on both of those um, patterns um, with the bag and the sheerness of the top. It's just, oh, drama. Again, more drama. Drama, drama, drama. It also reminds me of the venues where a lot of queer underground parties happen. Like, you know, it might be a little dilapidated or a little unfinished or, you know, but there's always something amazing to take a picture in front of you know there's going to be something like that so of course there's this like amazing i don't know if that's an intentional like design or that is just something that has been um exposed through maybe demolition or remodeling but you know it's sickening and it's there and you know you happen to be wearing some plaid pants so let's stand in front of it um so it reminds me of the grittiness of a lot of underground queer nightlife Mm -hmm. back rooms the walls are caving in but you you're there to party not to complain yeah exactly you're here to party you're not you're not here to like be an interior designer but um i love that in a lot of those um those venues and those spaces there's still beauty um that contrasts with the beauty of the people there um I love it. Is there anything else that kind of like draws you into that picture? I mean, the makeup, the makeup. I do like that makeup. That is a beautiful color. You know how like I love a blue face. I know you love a blue. <laughs> I love, love a blue mug. What do you think about that? Um, that 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 aesthetic choice to not embellish it that, that much when it comes to. The oh. I think it's like great. I think that like makeup has, there's like so many different ways to wear makeup and like it's all about expression and like all about like what's there, you know, like, and that's like really what like club cake culture is. Like, how do you feel? How do you want to express yourself tonight? Do you want to like, it like really a lot for like gender fluidity and like kind of like disconnection from gender and normal society, like in the club, you need to be whatever. Um, who, who you want to represent yourself as, that's people who acknowledge you as. And it yeah, can well, I love it. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And um, 
kind of what some of the research I was doing on uh, Liz Johnson Archer um, and some of the um, interviews she gave, she talked about how some of these people, obviously some of these people are obviously out loud, proud activists, queer artists, but some of them live very, you know, day-to-day -day lives where they come from communities where they can't be, you know, out super loud and proud um, for safety reasons or maybe for economic reasons or familial reasons. And um, she talked about in some of those interviews how some of these folks, this is their one chance to just go all in and they go all in and they, they plan it all week or all month and they come totally invested in expressing themselves as who they really are. Um, so that's another thing, yeah, totally resonates with some of the experiences I think that we have across the pond with our club kids and our club culture. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I see like a lot of parallels. Speaking of parallels, this one here has a lot of parallel lines. Uh, I love the shapes of this. Uh, uh, none of these have titles. Like I, I want to call it like EL17809.1. <laughs> Yeah, and that was another thing I found in the research. Most of um, the work in this um, PDA series, has, they have no titles, they're untitled. Um, and I, Liz Johnson Archer talks a lot about the photographs of these people, um, using it as a way to really show the, obviously they're coming out of this very kind of surreal, like, um, environment of what a club, you know, club life is. But underneath that, you know, glitz and glam and glitter, you know, there's still people. And this is a way to show the humanity of, you know, black and brown people and centering them as um, just as glamorous as, you know, Hollywood movie stars um, and centering them in their narratives um, in a community that they build and trying to show, you know, the commonalities that you know exist with all of us, which I also love. Definitely, definitely. I love how like the square looks as though it's an afro. You know, like yes, yes, yes. Like, like as if he were at one with the background, and really like how it's like really cohesive. I can't like. I think he's in front of something and it's just that's the way the picture looks but I, I don't know I don't know like yeah his hair naturally like obviously the the tone of it just seeps into that black backdrop so yeah it becomes this otherworldly almost um you know almost very very abstract mm -hmm. and obviously you know I love you know me I love a sheer look I love a sheer look so I love this sheer, like, it's almost like the press um, with the little black Speedos, you know, it gives me very, um, it gives me a little reminiscent of like Studio 54, a little Sylvester, I get some Sylvester vibes, um, which I love, you know, I'm very inspired by Sylvester's music. This is what it kind of reminds me of. Studio 54, Sylvester, 70s. And it looks like this was taken two years ago. Like all of these things, like the way that they're um, shown, it looks like they're old. Yeah. Um, two years old. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's another interesting thing about queer club culture. You know, we... Um, so much of it gets reborn into each generation, you know, the aesthetics or the music or the, the you know, the culture, um, and each generation takes a new spin on it, right? But, you know, there's always those little bits of fundamental um, brilliance and that really comes from black and brown, trans and queer people, you know, um, you know, the art and the culture that comes out of our communities. Like, it's, it's a little, it's everlasting, you know, it comes back and comes back and comes back. <laughs> Which I love, and that's what this is reminding me of, like those fabulous, you know, moments in the 70s. Well, like, 
Did, oh, did the, the things talk about the people and the research? I don't know. On her website. I'm like looking at the Brooklyn Museum. So like when I was doing reading and research, um, she, she um, obviously talks to these folks and gets like some sort of like acknowledgement that they would like their picture taken by her, but she purposely tries to keep like their names or their identities outside of it, of the photos being ex exhibited um, as a way to hone in on the, um, and what she was saying, the, the soul of these people, the soul and the humanity of um, what she calls people, you know, how she describes as people of African descent, people from the, the diaspora, um, and how their communities, their narratives, their, their ability to, to have a resilient survival throughout transitions, passages, displacement, capitalism, you know, still in all of that, you know, they still find a way to thrive and be joyous um, or to experience pain or to experience community or family. Um, so yeah, reading about Liz Johnson Archer and um, researching her work was amazing. I was so happy to learn about her work through this exhibition. But yeah, what about this last one? Like this last one is very, very similar to kind of a little bit what I'm wearing. <laughs> a little more fabulous. I'm, I'm not wearing anything as fabulous as that. <laughs> like Grace Jones, Rick yes. James, like Vogue Nightlife. Um, like this person came and like they brought a look. They want to jingle as they want. <laughs> they heard and seen. I love it. Yes, very Grace Jones, very, um, gives me very um, ball tees, you know, like when those ball categories are calling for very elaborate um, looks um, that are creative, like this is what this gives me, tens across the board, this person knows they came and everyone's looking at them. Um, I love it, and just the there's like a little smile, like there's like not a smugness, but just an acknowledgement that yeah, I know I look good, and so there's that little little smile and that twinkle in their eye, which I love in this picture. They're looking over their shoulder, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. Right, just a little like you know, but it's there's so much confidence in this photo too, which I love. It, this person is confident. This person knows they look sickening. Mm -hmm. All right. So one of the biggest things about the PDA series is how it documents nightlife and experimental music and Contemporary Art Museum wanted to incorporate that. So we have two musical guests for you. We're going to start off with Bates, who is a St. Louis rapper. She is an icon really she is well known she has played all over the country i am such a huge fan bates's music is aggressive and important and poignant and you at home are really 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 gonna love this so get ready for bates one Our mothers are crying, our 
our fathers adopted in America's highway. Her thinking about all the blood shit. Conclude ain't no love here. They say maybe we should recolonize. But we don't know nobody there. Too many dead from intimidation. They raid off as Obama's nation. Black president can't save a nigga, so we calling Jesus while bodies bleeding where the earth reeks. So abomination, let them tell her we hallucinating. Ancestors in the noose are hanging. Everybody seeing the apparitions. Been hella anger since integration. U.S. with no you is just a bunch of chaos. The label stick. Fuck up after fuck up when America gon' pay for this. Thoughts hollering about food stamps and food stamps never change shit. Even slaves got fed, my nigga. We ain't the ones that take the shit. Ain't investing in our school systems. Our school kids in the fifth grade. Teach whites to be masses, way like, teach us to be fucking slaves, black bodies. In the southern green. Too many beat before Rodney King. Too many dead, no murder scene. Fuck Darren Russell, fuck Bob McCullough. Too many bodies, too many dying for me not to say shit about it. Through the hands of the grand jury, prosecuting for the persecuted. Code of arms in my rear view. White people think these are all illusions. To this bitch, give us restitution. Ain't no flag, ain't no saluting. This is how to be animals and parade us off for your own amusement. You just had to be destitute, so the rest of you and your institutions. You just had to be cruelty and it's cruelty, but no solutions. Use me to fuck the people until they think we are savages. Every single statistic, we ain't nowhere near the averages. Yeah, and even monsters have good days. And you fucking cowards had a good way. Get to the words of my tongue, and they wonder what the hoods say. The clan can wear hoods, but we can't wear hoodies. This is present day black bodies. Sweet. song almost four years ago, four years ago, after Mike Brown got killed, murdered, like bodies who's recording the call, I feel like my own, written by me, and Tyler. I know I could've went to Harvard, but so much has changed. I could've graduated college, I had so many A's. I could've been that girly model, rocking the necklaces. Remember telling my mama that one day that I'm just trying to find my way. Ain't too much more that I could say. Had no need for excuses on the choices that I made. You don't believe in something that you can fall for anything. Make a name that ain't only on the grave. My mind's in a different space, I gotta be great They plug me in the system, they say it gotta be Bates I never gave a fuck cause the streets allowed me to fake The realest in this hemisphere, it's no time to be late 
precision and in clearing the first you die then you wake then the ministers receive your tears that's your life in his face not a hood like the paparazzi watching coppers catch a body politicians hiding children mistresses riding ferraris i don't bother me nobody i'm just trying to see tomorrow relieve the soul of my people when it's so hard to swallow that homies that'll die for me They wouldn't even lie for me Who'd rather catch a bull than end up screaming at the sky for me This rap shit took a lot of me And I don't play the lottery So every dollar spent just know I earned it being property Logically and honestly Sick of being property Logically and honestly Sick of being property I could've went to Harvard But so much had changed I could've graduated college I I could have been that girly model rocking that with Jays. Remember telling my mama that one day that I'm just trying to find my way. Ain't too much more that I could say. Had no need for excuses, only choices that I made. You don't believe in something that you can fall for anything, make a name. What's the four point on community school when you just want to rap? I live my day so desperate it made me want my corner back. I'm far from that, worked hard for that with all that falling back. It cost me that, and if karma's black, then all that's on the map. I gave too much for still her, even my still her isn't that. I'm in position, fuck who offended, you cannot kill me, this is fact. Ain't no fur, I do not feel fur. Look in the mirror, none of my black. If I had been inside, would have been rich. Look at my wish to see where it lacked. I get defensive, really, I've been here. Questions get answered that should have been asked. I made decisions, I had to live with, cause I'm a business. Got to the back, did it with friends, was it I uh, ended? I just be living, nothing has changed. Call me a misfit, call me a shit, see, just from your chick, she know me my name. Always moving, never stop. No rest, always work, always moving, never stop. No rest, always work, always moving, never stop. No rest, always work, always moving, never stop. No rest, always moving, never stop. No rest. No rest, always work, always moving, never stop. Society's blinded, way too messiah They wanna judge me, see my attire I ain't required, but not desired They're the contestant, I am acquired They wanna judge me, call me a sire I'm just a siren, warm by the fire I'm below temperature, warm by the fire Living the holocaust, built for survival Bombs over Syria, screaming the sword We scream Masada, you are God They ask for leaders, we ask for followers Eating today like we're starving tomorrow I hurt the shots, but now I'm hollow Flit out of water, brother can swallow Black in Jamaica and won't let it no longer wait Tending for eye melanoma, fuck it, I give them one way to relapse. Hey, they're forcing that muscle, that crack. Hey, no slitching, no glitching, no act. Hey, that woman that angry, that black. Hey, you give me a pen in the pack. Hey, and I'm pretend I can rap. Hey, and flip it to limb and stacks. Yeah, that dead homie's not coming back. What's up, y'all? It's your homegirl Bates, representing STL St. Louis City. Ride or die for that. Um, that song I just did was called, uh, that acapella I just did is from a song I have called A Day With Lisa. You can check that out, A Day With Lisa, if you just type it in. But, um, yeah. Take one. Uh. As the leaves turn, the heat is burning, my niggas dying just cuz. I feel demons watching, trying to see me off, watch the time fly, it just does. And from the ground, I mean from the dirt, I mean from the grave, from that mud. Goes a child of sickness, goes a child of children, you can smell the youth in their blood. Fuck around with young thugs, got you ducking down from them slugs. My city's sick and don't give a shit, it'll let you stiff in the club. Since they killed Nipsey, my whole crew, if he only few really send love. We can die swiftly, be a world listen when the pigs really are the plug. That's why I stress to protect yourself, you can't give them all of our guns. But imagine how different shit would be if the feds wasn't corrupt. Remember back when the only gun was a super soaker in the hood. Now a super soaker can subdue a soldier, we just do bad and smoke good. We ain't jumping niggas in gangs. We individually slay. We are set fire to a bonfire. You're still not entertained. And the white folks don't engage. We a freak show on display. When the seat's low and you fall, even your weakness ain't the same. Fuck it, I'm living life like this. Me and your mics are kissed. Niggas die to be saved. Still gonna experience crazy ass shit. Got me thanking God for Chris. But scared to him and his gifts won't have a place when we out of space. Just make it all make sense. If God still keep a list, a prayer really exists. Cause some of these people ain't live here just to die and not get shit. These white folks own the prince. That's where the God is a myth. They'll say shit about the Jews, then they cash you into that pit. Uh, mama gonna whoop me to death. Told me to pray for myself. Told me to pray for myself. I ain't seen nothing but wealth. Been getting money for days. All this glory in the face. They say I'm killing them all. They say I'm stuck in my ways. 
They say I'm all in the way. They say I'm all in my bag. Told them I'm killing them all. Told them ain't nothing gonna last. Told them I'm ready for war. Told them I'm stuck in my past. They say I'm ready for war. Nothing gonna last. Yeah, it's your homegirl Bates, you know what I'm saying? Um, hope y'all enjoyed the show. I know it's a little weird because we've been doing things totally different than what we usually do, you know what I'm saying? We love the stage, especially artists like me, we love the stage. But as far as I'm concerned, I feel like y'all got the message across, especially given the times that we had today. You know, we have cultural uprisings happening at the same time. We have a lot of things going on. So, yeah, make sure y'all go out and vote in November. Shout out to Contemporary Arts Museum and shout out to Massey Glamour for putting me on and making sure my stuff looks kind of crispy, you know what I'm saying? Because right now, we don't really have the means to really do stuff, so I really appreciate that because it's kind of tough for me right now. But follow me if you love me. You can see all of my videos and all of my good shit on BatesSTL.com. Uh, Bates underscore, I'm mean, sorry, Bates-STL.com. Bates underscore STL or Bates STL on all social media. Or you can just Google me, Bates Rapper, Bates Whoopie Whoop, whatever you want to say. I'm probably going to pop up 9 times out of 10 if you cross-reference me. So, yeah, my voice is shot because this is what my voice sounds like after, like, days and days and days of doing this. But I love y'all. I wish y'all nothing but the best. See you on the other side of dopeness. Next up, we have Lada. And I first found out about Lada when they submitted music for Tower Girl Pride to be played on a pop-up radio station that we created. And their music was just so cool and serene and ethereal. And I just wanted to find more. And when Cam hit us up about experimental music and this event, and I was like, Lotta would be great for this. And I hit them up and they created this piece for all of you. And these are all original pieces by Bates. And this is also an original piece by Lotta. And I really hope that you enjoy.
All right, and so my name is Max and Glamour. I am so happy that I've been with all of you tonight with Cam First Fridays. I hope that you are enjoying the digital age. I hope that you are being safe. I hope that you are wearing your mask and practicing social distancing. Together we can get through this. And I want you to be kind to one another, be kind to yourself. It, there's a lot going on and during this time, art is so important. So support your local artists, support the arts, keep art alive so that we can look at something and experience beauty because the world around us is chaos. And with that, I leave you and see you next time.